Hello. Hello. Nice to be here, man. I love coming to Liverpool. I was actually, I was born in Liverpool, so I love coming back. But I don't live here anymore, though, because uh, back in the 1970s, my mum and dad were sold a dream of a life in the country. I moved to fucking Runcorn. Yeah. Yeah. All right, nice choice, man. What a fucking shit hole. Anyone ever been there? It's quite famous, Runcorn. It's famous for the, uh, the place where they sit on two pints of lager and a pack of the Christmas films. Remember that? Which was ironic that it was filmed there because just like Runcorn, it was fucking shit. <laughs> but uh, I, remember, I remember the day uh, my dad came in and told me my brother, that we were moving to Runcorn. He came in and he said, kids, he said, we're getting out of this crazy place. We're going to a place where they've got fresh air and fields as far as I can see. I bought a house next door to fucking ICI. <laughs> I went bald when I was 16. But... Uh, they're quite lucky for me though, because at least I was born somewhere decent, not like my little sister. She was actually born and raised in a house next to a chemical plant. Right? But she's not gone bald though, but she's got three tits, so uh, <laughs> she's, uh, she's popular, if nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> now we're off. But uh, I remember it, my dad, because uh, I, I mean, I was quite lucky. I know I lived in Runco, but I lived in quite a nice area. I had a, I had a nice childhood growing up in Runco. Remember, my dad used to sit us down and tell us all about his own childhood growing up in Dublin. Which is weird when I think about it, because he was from Birkenhead. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've, uh, I've been doing comedy for, for a little while now. Uh, before I started doing comedy, I actually spent 10 years in prison. Well, technically I worked in a call centre, but it's the same fucking thing, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to be there, everyone's trying to escape. I can see why you bought that Mercedes now, Paul Wilhelm. <laughs> sorry, I'm just putting out your bird's pit, that's all, sorry. <laughs> he is, isn't she? I'd fucking buy a Mercedes if I could afford one. Do you want a Fiesta? I've got a Fiesta in my mum's name, that's how fucking good my life's going. You know, that's up to me bloody eyeballs. But uh, well done. Are you the one who designs the game? Classic banter. I can see why you're with them now. Mercedes in the band. But yeah, so I worked in this call centre. I worked, I worked on a team full of lads half my age. Like, and some of the shit we go up to is mental. Like this lad came in one week. He's absolutely knackered. But half an hour late. And I said, mate, what have you been up to? He said, oh, Colin, last night I had a booty call. I said, a fucking what's he call? <laughs> He said a booty call, he said I was lying in bed, then about three o'clock in the morning, I got a message on Facebook on this girl that I know, went round to her house, I had sex with her, and got off. I said, shut up, as if that really happened. He said, yeah, you're single, you must have done that. I said, listen mate, I'm in my forties now. The only thing that gets me out of bed at three o'clock in the morning is my fucking bladder. <laughs> You've got that to look forward to, lads. He knows the score, don't you there, Chris? Weapons man. Prostate probs, prostate probs. <laughs> But uh, it amazed me how, how confident these lads were with women as well, because they knew exactly what to say and do to get women to sleep with them. Because I was terrible with women when I was younger. I mean, I'm still fucking terrible now, to be honest. But I was so shy and naive around women that I was a virgin until I was 22. Oh, God. Oh, God. That was really patronising, that, by the way. <laughs> it was. And I tell you what, I haven't always looked like this. I was a looker back in the day. I haven't always been a fat four-eyed Carl Pilkington, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> or more recently, the leader of fucking UKIP, that was a blow. <laughs> Although we did sell out a gig in Burnley when I was on the poster. <laughs> well, yeah, I was really ter- I was terrible with women. I, I didn't have a clue about sex and positions and that kind of stuff. The only 69 I knew was egg for young after I saw chips and the local takeaway. I didn't have a bloody clue. Now, this is like 1993, 94. I was working in a warehouse at the time. And everyone that was working with was much more experienced than me. They were married and they knew I was a virgin because I fucking told them. I never thought they'd find that funny. <laughs> but a knob, right? So these stories talk about sex in front of me make me feel awkward and embarrass me. And I was walking across the yard one day, this lad shouts out, he goes, hey Colin, so me and lads are having a bit of a chat, we want to know, have you ever had one of them 69s? And I said, well, I said, it's funny you should say that, mate, because I had one of them last night. He said, oh my God, that's brilliant, how did you get on? I said, well, I struggle to be honest, my dad finished it off. I come from Runco, no one battered a fucking eyelid. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've not been feeling too, too well of late. I've had a really bad case of piled. Ooh, lovely that, isn't it? You just winced there, love you suffering. <laughs> no, no, fair enough. Yeah, but I've been, I've been suffering with it for a while now. A typical bloke, I let it go on for a while, thinking it was going to go away, but it didn't go away, it just got worse and worse. But then last week, I was in total agony with it, so I couldn't put up with it anymore. So I went to the chemist, to got some cream, and then on the whole, I'm feeling much better. <laughs> hey, so pun that, pun that. That'll get me on the telly, that one. No, obviously, no, it's fucking shit, won't it? But uh, yeah, I've, I haven't really had piles of that, would be disgusting. Um, I've had the shits. So <laughs> you just winced again there, love you stuff in there as well. Don't sit in that white car. Oh, that's disgusting, sorry. It wasn't funny though, was it? That's fine. <laughs> but yeah, 
But yeah, I've had a really bad... I, I, I got the shit. So when I went to Benny Dome for four nights, I had the shit for two nights. All I could do was stock up on Imodium. In the end, I took 24 Imodium tablets. I overdosed on Imodium. You ever done that, mate? If you've, if you've never dosed up on Imodium, right, I'll tell you what it's like. You know that game, Kaplunk? <laughs> imagine... Imagine playing that, taking all the sticks out, and nothing moves. <laughs> Welcome to my world. It's horrible. But I, uh, I'm, <laughs> I wasn't too bothered, though, because I'm going away again in a few weeks. I'm going to Thailand for two weeks by myself. I'm not a pervert, though. You have to chuck that one in, like voting Brexit. I'm not racist. You probably are. Sorry, have you got any in? I don't know. But yeah, I got, well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it for a couple of reasons. The first one is, uh, my last girlfriend was of Thai descent. I mean, what it was, she was, she was born in England, but her mum was from Thailand, and her dad was a pervert, so that's how, that's how they met. And uh, <laughs> she, was a, she was a lovely girl, she was. She had, a really, she had an unusual name. Her name was Ping. It's actually a Chinese name, which means, it means peaceful. And that summed her up, really. She was very gentle and quite a quiet, timid girl, really. But she had this really weird fetish where she loved me to shout out her name over and over again while we were having sex. Like, the first time we'd done it at my house, my flatmate thought the microwave was broken. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've, got, I've got to go with this. This has been, this has been lovely, by the way. Uh, I'll tell you a couple of things. Have we got any, uh, have got any mums in with this year if you're a mum? Oh, okay, you know, you're quite young, but you could be from Kirby, couldn't you? I don't know. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, my mum's lovely, right? She's 71 years of age, and she's as mad as a clown's cock, right? Honestly, God, some of the shit she comes out with. I went around to see her the other week. Sat at the table, my sister, we're having some dinner, my sister gets a phone out and goes to take a selfie. My mum went, oh, what are you doing there, Katie? Taking one of them onesies, are you? <laughs> I said, mum, it's not called a onesie, it's called a selfie. She went, no, that's not a selfie. That's what your father used to do with my time in the month. Imagine hearing that from your old queen, fella. <laughs> right. And I, uh, I started wearing glasses about uh, seven or eight months ago. I was 40, 40, 45 now. So anyone who wears glasses, they know it kind of changes your appearance, really. So I was feeling a little bit self-conscious. I don't know about you guys, when I'm feeling a little bit fed up and a bit low, the person I always turn to is my mum, because mums are lovely, really, aren't they? Obviously not. Right, fair enough. So I walked in and said, Mum, I said, what do you think of my glasses? She went, oh, to make you look a better. No, let me start again. To make you look a bit like a paedophile. Oh, Christ, I said, that doesn't help. They don't know, but they do sue you. So that's bloody worse. <laughs> my glasses. Uh, anyway, you've been this... This is genuinely, everyone talks about this is the best gig in the country, so keep on supporting it. Uh, I've been Colin Avery. Good night.